Let it go on. But my brain's kind of short circuits every now and then. So anyway, Ouch. we'll let him run get a son. I'll work on this one right up here. How many of you are free today? Live in the free country, live, Amen. got freedoms. We're free, aren't we? Amen. So they say. But there are many people who are in prison today, aren't they? Many people who are shackled by chains. Many people who are enslaved. Some of you may have actually spent a little time in the Hooskow, had you? Maybe, maybe a few of you. I ain't looking at you, Clyde, but well, you know, some of the things you've told me, you know. You ever had handcuffs, chains, leg irons, all those? It's pretty restricting, isn't it? You get locked up. You know, maybe it was at the local jail for an overnight stay or maybe it was several years in a federal uh, facility for some egregious offense. But you know, it's all kind of the same. Handcuffs, chains, leg irons, slamming and locking of doors. Your freedoms revoked. Someone else Tells you when to wake up, when to go to bed, what to eat, when to eat, where to go, what to do. You have no freedom, do you? See, I've never been there, but it doesn't sound like a real pleasant place to me. But what if I was to tell you each and every one of us have been shackled, have been chained, have been imprisoned at some point in time in our life? We all have been. Turn with me, if you would, to John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. Most of you bring your Bibles and follow along. Okay, all right. You know, not, not 31 through 36. So, you know, not bringing your Bible to church is kind of like showing up at a football game without your helmet and shoulder pads. It's going to get painful, so you ain't ready. But anyway, so Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never yet been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Let us pray. Our most gracious God in heaven, Father, we thank you today for all the blessings that you have poured out on us, Father. We pray today for your wisdom, for your knowledge. We pray for your understanding, Father. As we dive into your word today, help us to see and to hear what we need to hear, how your word can change and influence our lives. Father, as we hear your words today, I pray that you'll just use me, guide my thoughts, guide my words. Help me to say the, th the things that need to be said. Help me to understand the meanings that I can impart some of this to your people and your congregation. Father, just let your Holy Spirit work in the hearts and lives of people today that they can understand the message that you have for them today. Father God, you know how inadequate we as people are and how unworthy we are to share your word. And we just pray today that by your grace, you'll give us 
what we need just the way we need it. And I ask all this in your blessing and holy name. Amen. 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 First thing I want you to see here is that sin enslaves us. Amen. Begin with verse 34, if you would. Everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin. When we commit sin, we become a prisoner. We become a slave to that sin. It binds us. It imprisons us from a life of freedom that God had planned for us. It's very easy for us to see this in some people's lives, isn't it? They get, you know, they're addicted to drugs, alcohol, things of that nature. They commit crimes against mankind. The theft, murder, things of this nature. And, you know, they get sent to jail. We stand back and we watch these people do these same things over and over and over again. You know, law enforcement calls them repeat offenders or sometimes frequent flyers. Because they just keep violator. coming back and keep coming back. Do what? Habitual violators. Yeah, something along those lines. <laughs> See, they're unable to break the chains of those sins that hold them, that have a grip on their life, kind of like the temptations that Robbie was talking about in our children's sermon this morning, how they, they pull at us and tug <laughs> at us and we, we, we can't resist, we can't let go. They keep going back to prison ruining their lives and the lives of many other people. Amen. Don't they? But what about us good folks? I've never been convicted of crime. I've never been in jail. Makes me pretty good better. Doesn't it? I don't have to worry about none of this, do I? How have I been imprisoned? See, there's other things that enslave us, that entrap us, that Bind us and chain us, aren't there? Amen. I have been guilty of the crime of pride. I got to be smarter than everybody else. Better looking than everybody else. There's crimes of jealousy, crimes of greed. Yes. Crimes of working too hard. Putting work first. See, whatever it is that motivates you, whatever it is that you are obeying, whatever rules your life, that's what you are imprisoned by. Yes. Romans 6 and 16. Do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness we are what we do we are a slave of whatever we follow we are a slave of whatever we are doing whatever leads us whatever guides us look and see what drives and motivates you today maybe it's climbing a corporate ladder maybe keeping up with the Joneses Maybe it's getting something for nothing. What is it in your life that you have to do? That you have to do? I gotta go do this and I gotta go do that. Is it serving God or is it serving yourself? See, if it's serving yourself, it's a sin. If it's everything is about doing what you want, if it's, whether it's keeping up with the Joneses, whether it's pleasures, whether it's putting more money in the bank, whatever, whatever it is that's guiding you, whatever it is that's pulling you, that's what you are imprisoned by. Amen. That's what you're a slave to, and it's got you chained and bound, just like those prisoners with the leg irons and the cuffs and the waist chain. And you know, I mean, they, they just, they can barely move. <coughs> But what, what is it? How do we know that we have committed a sin? See, a criminal is pretty easy. They know they've committed a crime because they have transgressed some law or some statute, haven't they? See, it's the law that makes us guilty. The law says thou shalt not commit murder. Thou shalt not 
you know, water your yards on Tuesday afternoon. The law says, and you violate that law, and you're guilty of committing that crime. See, the law states what you cannot do. It doesn't tell you what to do, but only what you cannot do, doesn't it? And boy, there are a bunch of laws out there to keep us in line, aren't there? Yes. We got city, we got county, we got state, we got federal, we got international laws. And then on top of all that, we got all of these little alphabet agencies that come up with all of their little rules and regulations and guidelines and you've got to be obedient to all of those also. And you know, probably sometime in your life you have broken some of those regulations, haven't you? Amen. Sometimes it's out of sheer ignorance. We just don't know what all the laws are. And sometimes we do it willingly and intentionally, don't we? Amen. But see, it's the law that condemns us. It's the law that shows us our crime. It's the law. When that judge stands before you and says, you have violated uh, item paragraph 23, item 16, subsection 16A of the Texas Penal Code of the of criminal justice, then you're guilty of that crime, right? Amen. See, it's the law that shows us our faults. It's the law that shows us our sins. It's the law that imprisons and shackles us. Look at Galatians 3, 22 through 24. That's uh, very interesting. It says, but the scripture has shut up or locked up, imprisoned, everyone under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, being shut up to the faith which was later to be revealed. Therefore, the law has become our tutor to lead us to Jesus Christ so that we may be justified by faith. See, it's the law of God that shows us our guilt. It's the law that convicts us. And try as we may, we are unable to keep that law all by ourselves. We, we try and we try and we try, but we are unable. You know, the IRS regulations are over 7,000 pages long. How many of you think and you're absolutely positively certain that you have never in your life violated any one of those 7,000 pages of regulations. Uh-huh. And there's a few of you in here that knowingly and intentionally violated a few of those regulations. Amen, brother. There's brother Kenny back there. Where's Zach this morning? I was waiting on him, and I don't know where he's at. He had okay. his last name. See, I don't know if I've ever, I'm pretty sure, somewhere along the way, somewhere down the line, I have violated some of the statutes, some of the laws made by man. Maybe I haven't been caught, but I, I have violated some of those laws. I'm pretty sure I have. And if I have violated it, whether I've been caught or not, I'm guilty, aren't I? Amen. And I'm in prison. I I. I need to suffer those consequences. And I am pretty sure I can promise you that you have violated some of God's statutes. Amen. Why? Amen. Because Romans 3 and 23 makes it very clear. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all are sinners. We've all committed some crime. And see, this scripture in Galatians is telling us that we are in prison because of our disobedience to the law. We are chained and shackled because of our sin. And that brings us to our third thought this morning is that every crime has a price, doesn't it? Amen. See, there's a price tag associated with every violation. It may be probation. It may be community service or possibly lifetime imprisonment or if it's real bad. The death penalty, right? We watched uh, Dateline last yesterday afternoon, and the guilty guy got the death penalty. 
If we violate some agency regulations, there's going to be a, a hefty fine to pay and poss possibility of some jail time. See, there's even an even larger penalty. There's an even larger price to pay for violating God's laws. Amen. So that is eternal separation from God. And it is spiritual death. That means that you're going to spend all of eternity in torment and anguish. And it'll be far worse, far, far worse than any prison on this earth that you can imagine. I've seen movies about, you know, Turkish prisons and prisons in Mexico and, you know, some of these other countries. And, and you know, they, they're just hideous. And I, I, I can't think of how, I can't imagine suffering through that but hell is going to be far worse and then but with God there is no end to that sentence hell is going to be far worse there's no hope for early release or a parole mm -hmm. see Romans 6 and 23 starts out with for the wages of sin is death what we have deserved for the crimes that we have committed what we deserve what we have earned is death and eternal separation from God and we have all broken God's law. We are all guilty. We deserve, we deserve, we have earned a lifetime sentence in hell for the crimes that we've committed against God. Amen. And there's no way you and I can pay our way out of that. Some folks can make bail. Some folks can serve their time. Some folks can, can afford to pay the price, but we cannot in and of ourselves. There's no way we can pay the price required to get us out of that jail. Amen. We're not strong enough to break those chains that bind us, are we? We're not rich enough. We're not strong enough. Nope. We are doomed. Because of the sin in our life. We're shackled and we're in prison. But praise God, there is freedom in Jesus Christ. Amen. See, we can have freedom through Jesus Christ. He came to fulfill that law that you and I were unable to pay. He shed his precious blood to pay the price for us. See, it's only through him that we can be set free. And it is by our faith in him that we are set free. Galatians 5 and 1 says, It was for freedom that Christ set you free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. See, we gain our freedom because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And it sets us free from those chains. It breaks those chains that bind us. It opens those prison doors. But we must stand firm to keep from falling back into those ways of sinful life. Amen. And we can only do that by following his words. Look back at our scriptures, verses 31 and 32. It says, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Right. See, our lives must be absorbed and directed by his word. We must remain obedient to him each and every day of our lives. Amen. And we must do it daily on a daily basis. We've got to put his words into practice. Amen. See, James 1 and 22 says, but prove yourself doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. See, you cannot just come in here on a Sunday morning, hear a spectacular message from a fantastic pastor. Or you can't hear one from me either. And you can't say, ah, I'm good for the week. Can you? And never think of God again. Yourself is guiding and directing your life. Now, see, Jesus' words must be a daily basis. They must 
be absorbed into our life. They must change our life and impact our life. Amen. See, are you set? Are you chained today to something? And there's so many things in this world that chain us and bind us. Maybe it's dealing with family. It may be fear. It may be whatever. These things bind us. These things imprison us. These things keep us from enjoying the freedom that God has set aside for us. Amen. See, if you want to be set free from the sins of, in your life today, come to Jesus. Amen. Let him break your chains. He is the only one capable. He is the only one worthy to break the chain of sin that's on your life. Amen. He's the Amen. only one who can unlock and open those prison doors. Yes. He is the only one who can set you free. Yes. Amen. Place your faith in him. Absorb his word. See, there's, there's no depth of sin that he can't forgive. Amen. And he desires to forgive you. He takes you just the way you are. You don't have to get yourself good enough because you can't do it. Amen. He takes you just exactly the way you are. Amen. Dirty, sinful, bound and chained and imprisoned. And he's the one who sets you free and makes you a new creation. Turns you into what you could be and lets you experience the freedom that he has for you. Amen. Do you know his freedom today? Have you experienced his freedom? Or are you still shackled? Hallelujah. Are you still chained to the things of this life? Amen. Come to him today. Would you stand with me, please? And pray? Our most gracious God, Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the freedoms that you give us. Thank you for allowing us to be set free from the things that chain us and bind us and imprison us. Thank you for setting us free from the slavery that overwhelms us at times. Father, just help us to turn to you Amen. to let go of the things that are so detrimental to us and help us look to you and to see you. Father, for someone this morning, that needs to experience your freedom, that needs to turn loose of everything in their life and just bring it all to you and give their life to you. Father, give them the boldness this morning to step out and come to you. We ask all this in your blessed name. Amen. 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 God speaking, you come. We're going to sing a hymn or two of invitation.